옆에다 올려놓고 
So then year after year, those layers kind of pile up on top of each other. Eventually, it gets so heavy that the bottom layer gets compact together. Those snowflakes, as they compact, they recrystallize, and that's how glacier ice is formed. So it's quite different than ice cubes you have in your freezer that just cold temperature and water. Here, it's snow compaction. It's the same principle if you ever had a snowball fight when you were a kid or an adult, I'm not judging. And then you make a snowball and you just push on it for a few minutes because you know it's gonna hurt a little bit more. It's about the same principle up there, just on a larger scale. And then eventually the ice field which is up there gets so full of ice that it pushes the ice in between the mountain peaks, forming six major outlet valley glaciers, just like the Athabasca that you have right here which is the second biggest glacier connected to the Columbia Ice Field. So it's about five kilometers long, so just a little bit more than three miles long, and one kilometer wide, so that's just about half a mile wide, a little bit more. Now folks, be ready for the most exciting part of the whole tour. We're gonna go down one of the steepest unpaved road in North America. But don't worry, this is my second time. Okay, we just fine. Just have a few safety rules I have to mention before we head down. The first one, just want to make sure everybody remains seated as it might rock a little bit. I wouldn't want anybody ejected from their seats. But then that won't happen if everybody could put their seat belt on, please. Oh, I made you look. Oh. <laughs> Hollywood, here I come. <laughs> No, no, I was just joking about the seat belts. There's no need for them. But I wasn't joking around about how steep this is. Look at this. So this is about an 18 degree angle, which means a 32 percent grade. 18, 18. 18, 1, 8. Yeah. Degrees. Yeah. And I can do all this without my hands. What do you think? Unbelievable. <laughs> No, there's nothing to be worried about here because those big ice explorers has actually been designed to go down this type of hill. So they're equipped with what's called a transmission muck up that I activate at the top there. So it locks the transmission in the first gear, giving us a very nice mood ride down the hill. I do have to apply the brakes once in a while just so my RPMs are not getting too hot, but most of the work to pick that we're going so slow is due to that transmission lock up. So those buses, they've been designed by a Canadian company that's called Foremost, and then Foremost is based out of Calgary, Alberta. So Foremost designed all together 23 ice explorers. So in the whole world, there's only 23 of those. 22 of them are owned by Brewster. Um, I don't know if you've been to the Banff Gondola yet, but if you're heading down this way, you'll see one in their parking lot there. And the other 21 are up here for the tour. The 23rd one was actually purchased by the U.S. government, and then right now they're using it down in Antarctica to carry scientists and their equipment around. And if you have some savings and you're planning to buy a new vehicle, you can purchase a nice explorer. It's only $1.2 million. That's it. But then you call me and I'll come drive it for free. No problem. Somewhere warm will be great. Yeah. So right now, folks, we're officially starting to drive onto the Athabasca Glacier. Sure doesn't look like it right now because this part of the glacier is covered by a moraine. I'm sure that Laura pointed out a few moraines on your way here, that terminal moraine, those annual push moraines. So a moraine is just a, like a pile of rocks and debris left behind by the glacier. This one right here is called the Ice Core Moraine. So the layer of rock here is about one meter, three feet thick, and sometimes not even. But underneath, there's still a good 30 meters. That's over 100 feet thick of ice right here. So that layer of rock is acting as an insulation layer. So it's protecting the glacier ice underneath from melting too quickly. So that's why we're higher here than on the bare glacier on your right hand side. But then if you look on your left, you can actually see, look at that ice just peeking through that rock. Just to give you an idea, the glacier is right next to us. We just can't see it because of that thin layer of rock. Sometimes that's just a few inches, a few centimeters thick. And 
And then before we start to drive on to Rio Glacier Ice, you'll notice we have to get through a little pool of water here. This is very high technology. This is called the Brewster Tire Wash. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen the size of the tires as you got on the bus. Those are called Terra Tires. So they're $5,000 a piece. They're about five feet tall, three and a half feet wide. That means 1.5 meters tall and one meter wide. So they're huge tires. You can imagine the amount of dirt and dust and rocks that stick onto those big tires. So by getting through that pool of water, we're just trying to leave as much dirt as we can behind just to limit the damage on the glacier. But then despite the fact that we clean our tires, you'll notice there's a lot of dirt still at the surface of the glacier. There's two different colors to that dirt. The one that we see right now is a little bit more brown. It just comes from the mountains surrounding us. It's always really windy out there. So there's a lot of dirt and dust that have been blown from the mountains, from the moraines, and just sat on to the surface of the glacier here. But then as we get a little further on the glacier, or even at the turnaround point, you'll notice a lot of the black dirt on the glacier. Again, that's all natural. It's called the creoconite. So creoconite is a tiny little piece of carbon that comes from the atmosphere. It's basically the heart of a snowflake. So this is, I think, the second time in the, well, now we're October 1st, so that'll work, but in September, we only had the snow once. And then today we have, that's the second time we have snow since the fall of start, which is quite unusual around here. But the glacier, uh, all the snow that was sitting at the surface of the glacier, all the moisture part of the snowflakes actually melted and went and feed their rivers and the lakes. But it, it left behind a tiny little piece of carbon that creoconate. And you notice that the dirt likes to gather together. That's because instead of reflecting the sunlight, just like the snow does, it actually absorbs the heat. So you'll notice the dirt likes tend to kind of gather together, and then slowly they kind of melt their way through on the ice, leaving those little, little cracks on the glacier. I'll bring your attention on the left side of the bus. So at our eye level there, that dark layer of rocks, that's still the ice core moraine. So you can actually see some glacier ice underneath right there. But what I want to bring your attention to is that way taller pile of dirt that we're following all the way to the front. And it's all the way behind us again. That's actually what we came down onto on that very steep hill. That's called the, the lateral moraine. So lateral, it means sides. Of so as much as the terminal moraine is indicating how long this glacier used to be, now the lateral moraine is a great indicator of how thick the glacier was. So you have to imagine that back in 1843, that's the latest that this glacier was as this, this big as size. Imagine the glacier was as thick as the lateral moraine is tall. That's how much it's been receiving since. And then before we get to the turnaround point, we'll see two more glaciers. Again, they're on our left-hand side. Those are two independent glaciers, meaning that they're not connected to the ice field, or any ice field for that matter. It snows so much up there, it's so cold that it's self-sufficient in just making its own ice. The first one is between the mountains at about 9 o'clock there. That's the Double A Glacier. We call it like that because it's sitting between Mount Athabasca, it's a little bit on the left there, and Mount Andromeda coming ahead. And the Double A Glacier is what's called the Hanging Valley Glacier. And then the last glacier we'll have the chance to see before we head to the turnaround point. It's right now maybe at 10, 11 o'clock there. So sitting in the middle of Mount Andromeda, that's the Andromeda Glacier, which is a Cirque Glacier. So I know it's very cloudy at the top of the Mount Andromeda right now, but you can still see that kind of half a circle shape at the summit of the mountain there. You have to imagine that thousands of thousands of years ago, it was just like a well-rounded mountain, a little bit like Mount Athabasca right there. And then the glacier was sitting at the top. But then with time, and especially gravity, pull the glacier down. As the glacier moved down the mountain, it actually eroded the interior of the mountain. So that half a circle shape you see up there has been carved by the glacier. So that's why we call those glaciers Cirque Glacier. It's quite impressive. So we're just getting to the turnaround point here where you'll be able to get up and then walk around. 
Yeah, just a few safety rules I have to mention before we head down there. Um, I'll just, you'll notice the turnaround point is this nice flat graded area. So I'll just ask you folks to remain onto this area, just not jumping on the side of the glacier and walking around because there's a lot of cracks and uh, holes out there and the glacier as is actually really sharp. So if you would fall onto your hands, you would actually cut yourself. But just for your own safety, just remain on that nice flat part right here. Also, just avoid walking directly behind the buses as those buses are so big. You can imagine, if you're right behind taking a picture and we're backing up, we can't actually see you. So just for your own safety, just remain at the front this side, but avoid walking behind the buses. Also, I have to read this sign or lay behind the buses. That's another great example. <laughs> So I have to read the sign above the door here. It says Snowmobile Tourist Limited does not assume responsibility for persons choosing to disembark on the glacier. So just keep in mind, is glacier ice, there's some spot that can be quite slippery. So just watch your step, go slowly, and you'll be just fine. So we're leaving here, leaving here excuse me, at 2.15, 2.15. So at 2.10, five minutes before we have to go, I'll walk my horn a few times, just letting you know, you still have five minutes and then it's time to get back. Our bus number is 543, so it's a big red bus, L43 at the front. If you can't remember which number it is, for you folks, it's super easy to remember because that's the only bus with a good looking driver. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'll be out there. Feel free to come see me. And it's really windy out there, so just make sure if you have a hat that you hold on tight to it because uh, I've, I've been running around trying to catch hat all morning. Have fun.